Hello and welcome in my next tutorial. In this tutorial I will show you how to make the car paint material in Octane Render. Before we start I want to show you what you can expect to make after this tutorial. So here's a few examples I prepared for you. Uh, in this case, for example, it's a bit more complicated, but you will still able to make things like that. And I will probably make another tutorial in which I will show you how to get uh, more complex materials like this. Here's another example, another one. This one is a bit more simple, uh, but I personally like simple stuff. And this one is probably one of my favorites here. This one as well, a bit simple, uh, but looks cool. Here we have this gradient going on, which uh, you probably know it's from the fall off uh, in Octane. Another simple one, another one with two gradients, but here is a bit more stuff going on. Here again, a bit of gradient here normal one. This one is a bit more tricky, just as this one. I will probably give you more notes about uh, things like that in the next tutorial. It will basically be part two of this car paint material tutorials. Here's two more examples and another one. And here's a small example how you make the car paint materials. Uh, so we have the base, which will be our diffuse material. Uh, it also can be glossy or metallic with uh, high roughness and low specular. Because for the specular, we'll add another layer, which will be, of course, specular material. And after this, we'll go with the flakes with the fall off. So it kind of blends with the specular layer in a way. And at the end, we are adding the clear coat, which will be like the final, uh, final uh, clean glossy reflection on top of whatever we prepared. So let's now jump into the Cinema 4D and let's start making those materials. So create extension uh, Cinema 4D Octane and Octane Material. So click on it, uh, make sure it's on diffuse or the glossy or the metallic but with the high roughness. But the diffuse works the best for, for me. Uh, you can change the beard model to GGX uh, energy preserving. It's a really good practice to always change it to this model because in most cases it looks the best. In this specific case it doesn't really matter because it's diffuse material but in later layers you definitely want to add the GGX energy preserving because it will look better. Uh, let's first go through what we actually need here. So we don't need the bump, we don't need the normal, displays, opacity, transmission, emission, medium and the rest doesn't really matter. So in roughness, you can add a bit of uh, something if you want, but you don't have to because it's still diffuse after all. In the color, you want to change it to something dark. In this case, uh, maybe something like, let's make blue-ish or maybe red-ish car paint. Something really dark like this is fine. And let's check the material layer. Add the layer and layer group. And now let's jump into the node editor where we will have better uh, glance at what we are doing. So here is our base material, which is diffuse. And here's a material group layer. And we can start adding the specular, uh, add the metallic one and another specular. And let's put it like this. OK, let's unplug those for now and let's focus on the first specular layer. In the specular layer, uh, you want to change the EOR to max. And I will show you exactly why you want to uh, change the EOR to max, which looks almost like a metallic one. Here's the metallic uh, layer. And I will show you why you uh, want to change the ER to max instead of making it a metallic layer. So if we change the fuse here to something like really bright red, we can see uh, the color is underneath the specular layer. But if we add the metallic layer, it's just covering whole things up and you, you don't see it at all. So that's why it's specular layer with full EOR. This way you get still metallic look, but transparent one. Let's lower this down and you can see there's a bit of this red tint. If I go a bit higher, you can see it. Uh, in this particular layer, change the roughness to like 0.3 or 0.4. Definitely don't go for something uh, like this. Go so for something more like 0.2 to 0.4, I would say. Uh, I will leave it at 0.3. I think that's the right amount. 
Uh, and in make sure uh, in the basic, the BRDF model is changed to GGX energy preserving. Uh, and actually let's set it up for all of these layers first, so we don't forget about it. Okay, the speckle layer is set. Now we can change the specular color here to whatever we want. It can be something like kind of orange color. Yeah, this is fine. I like this. And let's go to the next uh, layer, the metallic layer. Let's connect this and it's instantly covering the whole thing. Uh, we can unplug the layer one for now so we can focus just on this one. We want to add the here first uh, fall off and let's add invert to it by dragging out the invert to the line and change the fall off skew factor to one. You definitely want to adjust those values to your needs and it depends on the object you have. Mm, actually, let's go even lower, like 0.5. So here's without the fall off and here's with. We get this. It's really visible here on the bottom, on the side of the of the object. Now let's add the flakes. The flakes you get from the custom pattern and dragging out the flakes and connect it to the normal. Let's solo note the flakes to see what exactly we are doing here. So this is how the flakes looks uh, in the octane render. Let me explain to you how uh, what those things do here. Uh, so let's start from the bottom actually. The blend factor blends between flakes and the, the base color. So um, if you go all the way up, we just have the color, but if we go all the way down, we have just the flakes. And also the base color is responsible for the background of the flakes. And this, and this color uh, here in the base uh, color, uh, is default for a reason. It's neutral color of for the normal map. So if we connect it to the normal map and put the blend factor all the way up and disable the solo node, nothing is going on here. But if we go start going uh, to the side, we start seeing all the distortions. Uh, let's solo load this again. Next is uh, the flake size variance. It's basically the uh, random uh, size of the flakes. Uh, I don't really like this, so I, I rather go with the uh, with just zero. So flag size is basically expanding those dots uh, all the way up. Uh, what you want to do is adding the transform here, the projection. I change the projection to box, and here we can drop something small like uh, even lower actually. Something like this. Let's disable the, no the solo node and let's blend it so it's not this noisy. Uh, to like this is fine, but we can get a bit more. This is look this is looking good, and we can actually lower this down a bit more, like so. I like to have it really small, personally. Uh, let me go uh, closer so we can see what's going on. And you can see those little flakes go, uh, around, like here and here. And, and if I make it uh, larger, you can see it even better. There, there's flakes in there. Okay, now uh, let's maybe add a bit of roughness to it. I think it's a bit too shiny. And I think that's it. Oh yeah, and then a specular color, color, of course we can add whatever color we want, which will blend really nice with uh, previous layers. And let's actually connect the previous layer, which is specular layer, to see what's going on. Uh, right now we have different color in each uh, step. So we have red here, we have orange here, and here we have the blue. And it will all looks really cool if you just adjust it. Like this is really cool, and I will have, and I will leave it for now. And again, up close, we can see all these cool little flakes. And again, let's crank it up. Really cool stuff.
And of course, you can also uh, get rid of the layer opacity here, but it will cover almost all of the specular layer and it, you will not get this blending effect. But sometimes you definitely want to use this. For now, let's leave the fall of map as the layer opacity here. Let's now connect the last layer, which will be the clear code. We can uh, even rename all of those layers. Clear code, edit, rename, flakes, edit, rename. Specular. In the clear code, you can add a bit of roughness. Something like 0.02 is probably enough. In ER, you can change the ER between 1.3 to something like 2. I think that's the best values in this case. I will leave it at 1.5. In bump, you want to add the octane noise, uh, add the projection and transform. In projection, set it to box. Let's add the color correction between the clear code and noise here. And lower the brightness in color correction to lower the strength of the bump map. Uh, let's zoom in to see what we have here. Let's lower down the scale here to 1.0.1. Let's change the brightness here to see what we have. I definitely want a bit more octaves here and maybe a bit more omega here as well. I think that looks fine. I will lower the brightness again to way smaller value. Maybe change the scale up and make it a bit uh, more visible. So the goal here is to just make the clear code not perfect. You probably want to spend a bit more time here adjusting it so it's a bit better looking. Uh, I will leave it just as it is right now. I will go back to full screen now. I think that's it here uh, for the basic stuff with this material. Let's now see what we can add to it to have a bit more control over the color of it. Let's disconnect the material layer from it. Go to the diffuse, add here octane gradient and fall off here. Change the fall of skew factor to 1, which works best in this case, but you definitely want to adjust it to your needs and the object. And here we can make small gradient, like maybe between uh, red and blue. Here, if you click at this gradient arrow, you have an easier time adjusting those colors here instead of clicking at it and adjusting it here without seeing the preview. So here, if you adjust it, you, you can see the whole preview thing. Uh, let's leave it like this, maybe. It looks cool. Now let's go to the material layers and let's disconnect all of these. Let's copy this by selecting it and dragging with the control. We can connect it to the specular. And of course, in the specular layer, we want bright, vibrant stuff. So let's turn it up, make this way more bright. And maybe we can even change it other way around. Mm, what else we can do here? We can actually lower those down. I think that those are too bright. Here, uh, I will go with more color like this, way more saturated. And again, we can change the color of skew factor if we want to. Uh, actually, I will change it to 1.5 because it looks quite good here. But yeah, you can mess with it. I will change the red to an even more vibrant color. Sometimes you want to click in the middle here and just bring this up. And uh, so you have this better um, transition between. Maybe it's a bit too much in this case. You can just tweak this, something like this, maybe a bit less. Let's add the flakes now. And in flakes, I want to show you a small, cool thing. So let's get rid of the specular for now, make the closer look at what's going on here. And in the thin film layer, change the film ER to one and just go nuts with the film width this way we get all of this cool stuff here. But you can see, if I change the scale of the flakes, you can see what's going on. We get this cool different shades and you can even make it even more uh, random if you just grab the flakes and put it into film width. This way you have even more weird stuff. And if you want to control it, you can add the color correction between and change the brightness. This way you get this cool effect, for example. And you can see there's a bit of uh, purple here, blue ones here. Um, it's a bit more random this way. Let's actually leave it like this. Uh, let's zoom out. Oh, and let's go back to the previous size of the flakes. And we can see those cool different colors around the 
and on the strong light we have here so we have this a bit of green blue purple all of this cool stuff here uh what we can do next is add the clear code and we already have cool looking stuff one thing i will change here is specular here i think it doesn't really look best with this uh setup right now so let's change something like this maybe yeah this looks cool and of course we can change this brightness here to maybe get different result of the flakes and if you want you can also change the eor here to like something like 2 and maybe roughness to 0.2 to get this uh, more rough look maybe 0.1 yeah something like this really cool stuff i think i showed all of the stuff about this you definitely want to mess with uh, a lot of stuff here like the diffuse and the fall of uh, gradient and the uh, specular also in flags if you want see it already looks cool uh yeah you can blend the specular here with the film with to get even more weird stuff you can take down the layer opacity and create really weird stuff here you can even add more uh, layers here to add dust or maybe even adding the dirt all of these were made exactly the same way as the, the one i have in the tutorial so yeah even even this one this one uh let me just go through really fast so the color here is white it's diffuse and for the layers i have here float connected to both fill with uh, in the flakes and in a specular just so they are in the same values you you don't see much of this pearl effect here but it's there the er here is lower uh just so we don't have this really over saturated uh, look so it just really just a bit of it we get more colors out of the flakes here we have here the clear code and the clear code is a bit different than in the material we made uh, it's the er is set to two and roughness is to 0 0.2 because if i take the roughness down it doesn't look that cool i just set it to 0 0.2 where it looks uh, like a pedal i think that's it for this tutorial in next tutorial i will try to cover more complicated stuff like damascus steel and a few other things like this we see right now hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial let me know if you didn't understand certain parts if you want me to explain it in the comment section you can guys give me ideas for the next tutorial if you want if you need uh, me to cover something also check out my instagram and yeah i think that's it see ya